Hello, hope you guys are doing well, and today I'm bringing you some Yamoja. As we invade the enemy, uh, we ran into the Thor first. I'm going to go ahead and hit him with some abilities. Purification beads will come out, which means he has no blink, which means he's dead. Uh, we do hit that stun, which ends up keep, or getting the keep of the kill. Now looking at the enemy, uh, Poseidon does blink out, so we're going to turn around and go for the Hercules or the Cupid. Hercules is pretty out of position. Oh, I can't talk. I'm going to hit him or attempt to hit him with the slow. I will miss just about everything, but so won't. And she will pick up that kill back on the Poseidon. We go Poseidon keeps like peeking, uh, but doesn't really come anywhere near close enough for us to kill him. I will hit that stun over the wall, but I don't think it's going to cause for enough damage uh, to actually finish him off. And now Athena over there is fighting two people. So I think we should go over there. Uh, the bus did also spawn, so it's at the time that we probably should have been ready to take some of these jungle camps, but we were too busy chasing people around. I mean, that's the whole point of invading, was uh, getting enough pressure to take these jungle camps. But unfortunately, Thor does end up claiming this one, uh, and I'm just going to try to uh, stop him from joining that fight over there. Kind of chase him off, give my uh, team an opportunity to fight the good fight over here. Uh, now he's a little bit out of position here fighting or looking at three people now hercules is really scary in the early game but he's out of abilities in this specific scenario and we'll be able to pick up that kill pretty easily thor decided to come in at a very bad time he'll die as well and looks like cupid is next if our cupid hits his one it's over and our cupid did hit his one therefore it is over very nice oppressive start i kind of feel bad for the enemy team i mean we're six kills in i don't know It'll be interesting to see how they play uh, around that start that we just had. So unfortunate. Anyways, Yamoja, as you guys know, uh, Yamoja made her way to Smite 2. It was like the last patch before this patch, I think. The one with Baron Samity. Um, and Yamoja is really cool character to have. I think it's a very cool character to have as I do hit the stun here and it's going to lead to just quite a lot of damage. I'm going to back off because I don't actually want to get pushed under tower. That should kill her. I'm going to throw the one over there in case it's not enough damage, but it is. And the Cupid will be able to grant herself yet another kill on top of her. Like already, I don't know what, four? <laughs> it's like four kills total now. Um. Anyways, Yamoja is a character that I did think is very healthy to have in the game because I think she's a pretty hard god to play and to get down. Uh, and I think we need that. I think we have a lot of easy gods that they brought over from Smite 1 to 2. Uh, so I'm glad that we at least have some of the more, you know, intermediate characters with Yamoja being a prime example. And she's also very unique, uh, which I very, very much like. She's a very fun support to play. She has that Omi mechanic as opposed to mana. Uh, she has a really, a lot of really cool abilities, some healing, which supports don't really often have, at least traditional supports don't often, often have healing. Uh, so I think she's very good for like those uh, players that come from other games such as like Overwatch where they're used to their supports having some form of healing. Um, and I think that she fits that niche pretty well because she can heal through her auto attacks and then also heal through her second ability, shield her allies. She has some, a lot of zone control with her second and fourth abilities. Uh, and then a decent amount of CC. A decent amount, a lot of amount of CC. Uh, let's go ahead and take this back here. All right, back in lane we are. As always, we're going to talk about the build a little bit later on in the game, but I want to mention if you've been paying attention to the channel at all in the slightest recently, then you know that I'm posting guides very often. Uh, basically, either the day after or two days after I um, post a gameplay, the god, um, what do you call it, guide is ready to go as I fight this uh, Hercules. And apparently the mid laner who actually did one shot me, so I'm going to go ahead and blink away and hit us with some healing for my second ability. Thor does blink in and start doing some damage here. I'm going to pick up these hearts to make sure that I'm not uh, easily killed. And let my team deal with that and clean up if there is anything to clean up over there. Doesn't look like they managed to pick up any kills, which kind of sucks. But at least I'm alive for the near future. We are staring at three people, so this is a little bit scary. I'm going to go ahead and whirlpool. I don't know what you call that ability. I can't remember. Uh, I'll think of it eventually. Oh no, I couldn't sneak through that little area, so I should die here. That's unfortunate. Anyways, back in lane we are. Uh, with the guides, like I mentioned, if you have any character that you've wanted a guide for, go ahead and check out the rest of my channel. I have guides for a lot of people as I go ahead and alt here. They're not able to quite sneak out, meaning they will take a lot of damage, and that does include this Cupid killing the enemy Cupid. And now we're both looking at the Hercules, who just did use his dash. 
tried to go for the slow and the stun. I missed both horribly. <laughs> Very good jukes on the enemy uh, Hercules. But we picked up the Cupid, and that's the one that matters. The one that's important to us specifically. Uh, but yeah, like I mentioned, if you want to... Ooh, don't get pulled. I mean, I got the healing. She also... Cupid also does have healing. But this is a pretty oppressive lane. Uh, but yeah, like I was mentioning, and that's on top of the fact that he has like seven kills. <laughs> Um, anyways, like I was mentioning with Yamoja, uh, or I was mentioning with the guys, if you have any guide that you wanted to see, uh, I might have it done already. I have a lot of guides up with a lot more coming very fast. Uh, so go ahead and check out the rest of the channel. I have a character guide playlist and you can go ahead and look to see if the guide that you've been looking for, uh, is a character that I've already done a guide for, uh, good damage onto the enemy Hercules. I feel like the Cupid took a long time to, uh, get back to lane here. Yeah, maybe I'm uh, just not paying attention. Looking up, don't want to get dunked on by the Thor. And there is the Thor. Cupid is pretty healthy to keep fighting. I'm going to go try to help our Athena just to make sure that she's not in any trouble. The soul's also rotating. I like how everybody rotates uh, pretty often here. I mean, no way he landed back down. So that's insta-death. I don't know how we managed to pick up that kill and not the rest of the team. But I don't know what in his mind... Can I push her back into the Kraken? Oh no, <laughs> I'm so sorry. He lived and we grabbed that kill. I'm going to go ahead and not hit that stun. I thought I had it for sure. Good uh, ultimate by our Cupid though will do not only a lot of damage, but lock them down in this general area and allow us to basically kill all of them uh, with the Gold Fury still being up. Uh, I'm healthy enough to tank. We're healthy enough to kite it between the Soul and the Cupid. So there should be a free Gold Fury coming our way. And it might finally give me the time to talk that I need. To finally mention what all the things that I need to mention. Discord server down in the description if you want to, or if you have any questions for me or for anyone, just about my in general. Uh, if you need some help with be it builds or any questions you might have, that's the best place to ask them. I or the other community members will help you out in that regard. If you want to play any games with me or just want some other uh, friends to play Smite 2 with, a nice toxic free community that you can join linked down in the description uh paired with all of my socials all of my socials are linked down there specifically the uh twitch is nice if you want some you know live my two gameplay then you can catch my live stream by following me on there uh and you can ask questions directly a bit of a different experience so go ahead and follow me on twitch if you want i think that's it <laughs> if you're enjoying this video then uh comment like subscribe so you don't miss out on future my two content i'm posting quite often uh, i think that's all i had to do in terms of self promo so the rest of the video you guys get is uh, all informative <laughs> well i don't know about all informative but i'll try my best uh, we'll talk about the build here soon but i do want to talk about some things within regards to yamoja i think playing yamoja does re oh, wait a minute as we're getting uh, pushed by the enemy jungler i'm gonna go ahead and drop the alt down here which she will blink into and get hit by I'm going to try my best to peel for my enemy, or sorry, ally uh, ADC. Hit her with some healing, push him away. She can heal herself a little bit. I'm out of Omi right now, but a beautiful taunt will continue to save her. Poseidon's here, not fast enough, however. And now it's just me, this Thor, this Athena, this Poseidon. Uh, she does come back in. She hits the first ability on that um, enemy Thor, and we will grant ourselves that kill. And now Poseidon is in a very sticky situation up against the Athena. Athena will claim that kill, Soul showed up to clean up just in case. This Soul is rotating a lot. Very, very cool Soul. She's definitely not going, uh, she's not staying in mid chilling. She's definitely rotating, counter rotating when she can. Uh, we don't really expect her to rotate as fast as the Poseidon because Poseidon is super fast. I don't know if you guys have played against Poseidon. I've been finding it annoying. I hate Poseidon. <laughs> but he is so fast. Like, good luck catching up to him. Good luck running away from him. It is awful. I do not expect this soul whatsoever to ever out rotate this um, Poseidon, but she shows up afterwards, which is the good thing. I tried to pull him, uh, got ourselves pulled up instead. <laughs> I'm going to try to back. If they let me, he will let me. Yes, he does. We start talking a little bit about the build. Uh, we start off with selfless selflessness. I would have gone War Flag. I quite enjoy War Flag myself, uh, but because we have the Cupid, I assumed, you know, she's going to be going power. We don't really need the extra attack speed as I go ahead and run towards the soul. 
uh, who I think has had this or has this pretty handedly. Ooh, maybe a little bit iffy uh, at times through there. I'm going to make sure that I apply some healing onto her. She has some lifesteal too to gain back up if we need to fight this. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to be talking a little bit about the build now, like I mentioned. Um, so yeah, with Cupid building damage, uh, we don't really need the attack speed, so I did end up going for the selflessness. Uh, in terms of the first item, uh, Gauntlet of Thieves is very much the standard. Push me under tower like I care. <laughs> Take this negligible damage real quick. Um, Gauntlet of Thieves is ov oftentimes the golden standard for supports. It gives you a lot of protections and it gives your teammates some protections as well. Honestly, the only item I believe that gives your team protections, if not one of the few. Whereas in Smite 1, we had, you know, the Heart Ward Amulet, the Sovereign Genity or Sovereignty or whatever, however the hell you uh, pronounce that item. Uh, so there were avenues of you, you know, giving your team prods. I went ahead and ulted this guy under tower, hoping that the soul would, uh, you know, dive with me. But he ended up ulting away anyways, and I'm able to dodge his ultimate with a well-placed second ability. Continue to heal ourselves and our team. And we're fine in this mid lane for now. A good stun will cause a lot of damage incoming. Uh, to me, apparently, because I ate the Kraken <laughs> yet again. Wait, he teleports in. I don't know about all that. I mean, low health or not, I'm still pretty healthy. You know, 400 health in with some prots uh, under my belt. Not exactly going to be too threatening, if I'm being honest. Did wall me off from the soul. I'm not able to help her out as much as I'd like to. I'll throw some auto attacks her way and get some of the healing going. I have the second ability up, which I will use here now. Uh, immune some of the damage that she would have taken. And I still think we have quite a big opportunity to do something here if they do decide to step up. Uh, but anyways, to continue with the build as they seem to have retreated. Um, Prophetic Cloak. Prophetic Cloak is just another one of those huge sources of uh, protections for you. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to place that there if the soul does uh, choose to retreat. Continue to hit her when some healing. I have some Omi left to push her back towards us if it seems... Uh, like she's running out of cooldowns and in a 2v2. Also, the chat being not lined up is pissing me off on the bottom left there. I don't know if you guys noticed that. Good taunt onto the enemy. Oh, he got blown up. <laughs> I didn't even have time to commentate over what was happening. He just insta-died and it looks like we're making our way to the Gold Fury. Again, hopefully it gives me time to talk about the build. I am having zero time to talk this game about stuff that I want to talk about. Uh, Prophetic Cloak gives you a lot of prots as well and some eventual mitigations once you stack it up completely. It's just a great source of tankiness for any support, and I usually tend to buy this right after um, Gauntlet of Thieves. Some people like going Gauntlet of Thieves second and this item first. I personally like Gauntlet of Thieves first, and you know, you're not a proper Yamoja player unless you throw a little bit. You troll your team a little bit with a movement, with a displacement if you will. Up next, I want to go for some of the utility items that are available to Yamoja. Usually, I leave these off for next. I want to get a little bit more protections or some health uh, under my belt before I go into these as I blink in and try to pull them but fail miserably. Uh, but I still do have the ultimate, so if he steps up a little bit too far, he's uh, going to get ulted. Uh, and I think the time is now to do that, or it would have been. He, he's he's playing with it. He's playing with my range to just walk in. I'm going to use the Amanita's Charm and ult him here. Hopefully the soul will be able to finish him off. And then I'll place a nicely nice third ability to allow us to escape. Uh, and then we'll just probably take out this tower because we're not in any real danger. If the soul decides to step up, come on, soul, let's take this tower or not, I guess. That's cool too. Um, anyways, build. Uh, I go for a little bit of the utility options later on after I already have some tankiness under my belt. But with how far ahead we are or how far behind the enemy team is however you want to look at it i think i can actually go both of my utility options right off the bat amanita's charm is an item that i very much appreciate uh, <laughs> who doesn't very much appreciate it these days with how much just raw op in one item is that a word it gives you a lot uh it does give you quite a lot uh and then also followed up by the talisman uh wait is soul in trouble no she is not she's never in trouble uh, I fear that we're running out of time to go over the build, um, so I'm just going to continue to talk about the build through this fight. I hope you guys don't mind because we're running out of time. Uh, Amity Discharm into Talisman. Uh, Amity Discharm is just going to give you a lot of health and some health regen as well as a little bit of protections, just a dash of protections, not uh, anything too much. Uh, but the, what do you call it, active 
uh, create a mushroom that heals allied gods uh, for quite a lot of HP. It heals both their health and their mana, which is nice to have in these team fights. It's a pretty large area. You just paste it down. You saw me put it down when we were diving the enemy Poseidon. Uh, it is quite effective. Talisman of energy, or it's not energy. Talisman of purification will give you some magical protections and a little bit of health, as well as some cooldown, which are very good stats to have on a, on a support player or on a support guardian, whatever you want to call them, on a support. Uh, the cooldown reduction is very much appreciated. There are not a lot of items that are going to give you cooldown reduction as the support. Uh, and then also to get a active as powerful as this one where you give your entirety, you know, your entire team beads. Very, very much appreciated. And then after that, you're just going to look to increase your tankiness. If you can find some cooldown reduction, you would, but on someone like Yamoja, cooldown reduction isn't too effective. Uh, so as another support, you'd be looking for any cooldown reduction that you can get as a Yamoja, you're probably going to be just looking for any form of mana. Mana is good uh, to increase your Omi and just overall tankiness. Something like an Oni Hunter's Garb can make you quite invincible with, you know, all of your health regeneration tactics and your repositioning tools and your, you know, all of your CC makes it very impossible for the enemy team to kill you. Uh, and just anything like that would work. If you're looking for another active, I usually tend to stay for two active items. If you're looking for another active item, Eye of Providence could be a good option for you if you enjoy warding. Um, but if you don't enjoy warding, uh, the active item on, I think it's Hussar's Wings. I'm not completely sure if that's how you pronounce that name. Uh, will cleanse all slow and give you slow immunity and movement speed for a couple of seconds. If you're having trouble up against some auto attackers on the enemy team, obviously Heart of the Nemean Lion and Spectral Armor are there depending on what situation you're in. Uh, in a situation that we didn't have a Cupid and we instead had something like, you know, a traditional hunter that works through auto attacks and also had the soul in the mid lane, uh, Shogun's Krasari uh, would have been nice to give you, you know, some nice attack speed as well as your team attack speed. Uh, and those magical protections that we haven't really talked about. And those are just some options of items that you have if you were needing uh, some extra items. Uh, but with that out of the way, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a bit of a short one because they unfortunately did end up surrendering. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Stay tuned for the Yamoja uh, guide coming up very soon. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Love you. Bye.